Hello everyone. Welcome to problem 3.29 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. Um, so this problem is in a new little section um, that goes through talking about uh, dipoles and real dipoles versus uh, physical dipoles versus uh, pure dipoles. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of these problems are going to be dealing with dipole moments and such. And so this problem states that we have four uh, charges placed uh, kind of as such as you see here. So we have uh, two charges with a charge of minus 2q, where two q is just some unit of charge. Um, <clears throat> and they're a distance a away. Well, this one's on the minus y axis, this one's on the y axis, so they're just a distance a on that axis. Then we have a charge of 3q here on the positive z side, and then a charge of q on the minus z side of the axis, also a distance of, uh, a away. So everything is equidistant away from the origin, um, like this. Kind of in a, I guess in like a, yeah, uh, kind of like a square, I guess. Anyways, the, the problem is that we need to find um, an approximate formula for the potential at points very far away from this charge configuration. So, of course, you know, this is all still dealing with the multipole expansion. And if you, you know, if you look at the multipole expansion and you, and you expand it out, you have your monopole term, you have your dipole term, uh, then you have your quadrupole term, octopole term, everything like that, right? So the monopole term, right, <clears throat> we, have a, we have a discrete set of charges here, so we don't have like a, you know, a volume of charge like we've been dealing with on our previous problems. We just have discrete sets of charges, right? And so we can easily add up what the total charge of this configuration is, right? If you add up the total charge, you know, if you were from very far away and you were to look at this sort of um, charge configuration, you know, the charge adds up to, uh, to zero, right? Because we have minus 4q and then 3 and 1q, so that's 4q. So minus 4q plus 4q is just going to be zero. So the total charge adds up to zero. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not producing an electric field and potential because the charge is not um, symmetrically distributed, right? On the y-axis, it's symmetrically distributed, but on the z-axis, it's not quite symmetrically distributed. So there is um, going to be some charge, an electric field and potential produced that's not zero. Um, but the monopole term of the multipole expansion, right, is just one over four pi epsilon naught and then in this case, our integral goes away. It's just a summation, right? Because we're, we're doing, we're using uh, discrete charges. And our monopole term is just the total charge divided by R and the total charge is zero. So the monopole term goes away. Um, but in this section, uh, Griffiths goes through um, how we can express um, the dipole term in terms of this new, uh, definition called uh, the dipole moment. So he shows that you can, re you can write uh, the dipole term as a dot product between the dipole moment and the r hat vector over r squared, um, where the definition of the dipole moment is just um, this part of like the inside of the integral um, from the monopole term. So it's just the integral over r prime um, times rho of r prime times d tau prime. So that's just the integral, part, the integrand part minus the um, minus the Legendre polynomial, I guess. But this is how he defines the dipole moment. Uh, so and it's basically it's purely based on the geometry, right? Because r prime is the vector to the charges. So that just depend. That's going to depend on how the charges are configured and the charge density and, and the tau, that's just based on also how the, the configuration and the geometry of the object containing the charge is. So the dipole moment is purely a geometrical quantity, essentially. And <clears throat> instead of an integral here, we can use a sum because we have discrete sets of charges. So really, um, our dipole moment can be expressed as a sum over one to however many charges we have of the i charge Right, because rho times tau is the charge density times the the volume, the infinitesimal volume, which is just the charge um, 
because it's you know charge per unit volume times the unit volume is just charge. So in this case, a discrete charge is just going to be this. It's going to be the charge times r prime. So uh, each of those are the ith um, ith terms of the sum. So if we just take our problem here and do our summation, then let's let's just see what we get. So let's just start over here, right? Our first term is minus two q. That's our charge. Um, and then the vector r prime pointing to that charge is going to be um, a, which is the magnitude of the vector, times uh, in the minus y hat direction. So I have a minus y hat. And then we have the other one over here, minus, minus 2q. So we have plus sign plus minus 2q times a in the positive y hat direction. Then we have this charge, which is just 3q times a in the z hat direction, plus q um, times a in the minus z hat direction. So that's basically our sum here. And if you do that sum, you basically get that the y hat term goes away, which makes sense because it's symmetrical. The charge configuration is symmetrical on the y axis. So the dipole moment, we can intuitively see that the dipole moment should be pointing this way because that's where the majority of the charge is. And that's, a, that's what we get here. So we effectively get that the dipole moment is 2QA Z hat. So our dipole moment is pointing this way. And <clears throat> essentially what we do from here is, I believe, right, so we have our P here, but now we need to dot it with our hat, right, because we're trying to find this potential. Um, so. If you express r hat in spherical coordinates, right, you get um, this, right, if in Cartesian, right, you express r hat in, um, in spherical coordinates, and you dot it, right, so we're just going to be left with the z hat term when we do the dot product between this and r hat. So effectively what we get is 2qa um, and then cosine of theta, which comes from the dot product um, that. So this is our p dot r hat, and we just plug that into our form formula up here, and we're left with a simple equation of that the approximate potential far away is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 2 times q times a over r squared uh, times the cosine of theta. And that's it. So this is a very short and sweet problem. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, please leave them in the comments below. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys on problem 2.3.30.